the Lord praise in the house. Amen. As we, as we sit, as we sit, the Lord bless you. Thank you for coming to the house of God. Hallelujah. Let's appreciate the worship team. We bless the name of the Lord. Let's appreciate ourselves for coming to the house of God. Amen. If you have visited us today, wherever you have sat, we want to know where you are so that we can welcome you in the house of God. We are so appreciative that you are able to come. So if you would lift up your hand, we will see you. Or maybe the best thing is to, yeah, let's lift up our hands because there are some people standing um, already. Can I ask if you are here for the very first time, if you can lift up your hand, we want to spot where our visitors are. We want to welcome you in the house of God. We have visitors down here. We have visitors <laughs> over there. Now I can ask the visitors to stand up. And if you are already standing, those that are already standing can lift up their hands so that people can spot them easily. And I want to ask the ushers to walk towards where our visitors are and uh, welcome them in the house of God for choosing to come and worship with us. And um, if where you are there is an empty seat and you're not saving it for anybody, if you allow the ushers to know so that some of the people sit standing can come and have seats here. So if you discover there is a seat next to you, allow the ushers to know so that they can bring in somebody. And I think the best culture is for you to push until you have left one side uh, empty so that somebody can come in. I want to appreciate those that were able to come to Umoja on Thursday. That was a great experience. And uh, we will pick ours after we finish uh, the, the 40 days of fasting. We will do the anointing here for the year. And we, we are looking forward to it. Next year when you hear there is an opportunity like that, please just come. It's for all leaders in whatever department you are in. And it was awesome. Um, this year we felt a little bit uh, proud. Somebody was saying we had more people than any of the sub-region. Any. Whatever sub-region they mentioned, we from Kasaran, we were more. And thank you for agreeing to come uh, this. And I know that your life will never, never, ever be the same again. Are those seats saved for some people? No. So, so people standing there, if you, the ushers will show you. If you are asked to come down, there will be a seat for you in the name of the Lord. Na kama kuna kiti bado uinue mkono, usiwe na nini wache asha wapatie ndugu moja aketi chini. But by the way, Deliverance Church usually was known by standing. Uh, so when people stand, now we are in Deliverance Church. When you have more people and some stand, then you're in Deliverance Church. But we'll make sure they, they can sit down because there are some seats up here. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We have been handling uh, the manifestation of the kingdom of God because God wants to manifest his kingdom. And we say thy kingdom come simply means thy kingdom be manifested on earth as it is done in heaven. Blessed be the name of the Lord. As it is done in heaven. John 10.10, 10, the Bible says, I am come that they might have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Here we find the first I am or one of the I am's in the Gospels when Jesus himself is saying, I am this and I am the other. But here Jesus is talking about why he came. The reason he came was so that we can have life and have the abundance of that life in the name of the Lord. If yours is new life or new living, translation, that word becomes even sweeter. If you read it in that translation, the B part of it says, my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Tell your neighbor, rich. 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 You know, very rich and satisfying life. That's why Jesus came. 
In the new NIV, uh, New International Version says, I have come that they may have life and have it in full. Because you can have life but have of it. But we have life but have life in full. So that what I have is what God has promised that he's going to do his people. And he will do it to me and he can do it to you to give you life. So if we ask Jesus, why did you come to earth? The answer would be, I came to destroy the works of the devil. Isn't it? So Jesus comes to destroy the works of the devil. But the devil also comes with a purpose. So the devil comes and when he comes, he wants to steal. He wants to kill. He wants to destroy. And therefore Jesus comes and he says, but I have come so that you can have life and have the abundance of it. I think we looked at why the devil wants to steal is because he already knows. If he allows you to live one more day, you are an enemy to his plans. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So Jesus has come so that we can have life. We can have that full life. We can have that satisfying life that the Lord gives to us. But the devil wants to steal it. He wants to kill it. He wants to destroy it. That's why Jesus came. And today we were looking at the permission that therefore he gives us to be, to prosper. He gives us therefore the permission to prosper. The permission to do what? To prosper. Tell your neighbor to prosper. When you prosper, don't be proud. Amen? Amen. So we are saying if you become an, an, an S, S, C, C, S. If you become a CS, don't be proud. Come to church still. If the Lord blesses you to live in Modaiga, still come to church. You know, because some of us have a problem. When God blesses you, you change everything and you refuse to change prayer. All what God is asking you to do is to become more prayerful when God blesses you because you are getting into another league. The battles are different. You see, the battles that Igade was fighting is not the same battles that some of you are fighting. So the battle is different, but if you enter into it without knowing, then the enemy can take advantage of you. But if God blesses you, be yourself. Amen. If the Lord blesses you with a new car, show off a little bit, but after showing off because you cannot show off forever, then come back to church. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And if you, you think people are not knowing, tell them where you have parked it so that you can walk with them to see it. It is not bad. Actually, it is not bad. I went somewhere uh, yeah, uh, Friday, and uh, we were meeting with other bishops. And uh, so I learned, uh, when I, came, I went there earlier. So when they were coming, they were dragging their feet because I had not arrived. They were looking for me with an old car that I used to drive. But I'm telling them, no, I, we can't be, I, I have another car. So when we left, they said, we have to see it. Now, I, I saw a little show off, isn't it? Just a little show off, but you can't show off forever. When God prospers you, if you're going to do it, do it just for a little while. Sasawa. You know, sometimes I thought, if you to own a kia to nivibaya, si nivibaya, watch our own it, lakini you see okira siku ati ukakaka, kuna tukumbusha kia tu yako ununua, at you know there were only two of them, yu ingine ili chukuruwa na uhuru, ulijuaje uhuru wali ingia mahali pale. So when God prospers us, because that's the desire of God to prosper us, if he prospers us, we, want, we need to go humbling ourselves so that he can keep on lifting us. You know, some of us where God does not bless us is because if he blesses us, the blessing will kill us. Nobody will talk in your village. So God is, make sure that he doesn't bless you so that you don't throw water. Ukanyangi maji uirukie watu na ni machafu kwa sababu ya baraka ulizo nazo. God has given us power to prosper. And I said in the first service that, and I've said it before, that uh, I, I used to do harambes here to buy vehicles and maybe Gashuru is a witness because the church could not be able to. But then the church grew to a place where they were able to buy me the first new car. When I say new, I'm not saying new from Japan. It's new. New when new is new. You know there is, the one I'm driving is not new. It's only new here. 
but it is not new. Somebody else has sat on it, right? But one day the church bought me a new car. A new car had not even clocked 100 kilometers. It was 80. That is new. Because the 80 were people trying to test it from the garage. But because I did not know how to handle the blessings of the Lord, which maketh rich but addeth no sorrow with it, I came with it on the uh, thicker road, but I parked it somewhere where my friend sells vehicles at Shineland. See, now I'm taking my blessing to somebody else. He, not for sale, but will be there for a couple of days. I could not handle that. But Sahin in a helicopter. It will land here. I'll just come and park it here. So that, so that, you know, because God is the one who blesses his people. He gives us the permission for blessing. And I'll read some scripture to guide us with what we mean that God gives us permission to prosper. I'm reading 1 Samuel 16, verse 10 to verse 13. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen this. And Samuel said unto Jesse, I hear all thy children. And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. And he sent and brought him in. And now he was ruddy and with you of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil, anointed him in the midst of his brethren, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. I want to go back a little bit and say, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. Our Heavenly Father, we pray that you speak to us in a language we can understand, cause us to follow you and know that you have given us permission, and the permission is for us to prosper. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. David was a shepherd. He was left somewhere tendering sheep. And uh, even for you, you know, for you, some of you that are my age mate, you know the young ones were the ones that were left behind when others were going to school, to take care of the little sheep that your parents would have. But thank God I was, I'm, a, um, I'm what we call town born. The advantage of town born is that there are no sheep and no cows, no goods. But I would visit my cousins and you'd see them very busy and they are only three years and four years, very easy uh, pushing in there the, the little goats and the little sheep or even one cow that the parents had even to go to the river so that it can uh, quench its own thirst. So David is placed in a place not because they don't love him, but because he has come last. You know, when you come last, your brothers don't love you because they even think that everything good is for you. Because you are a baby. I, I, I know what, you know, some of you will get this, this message right now and others will get it as I finish. You know, some, you are a baby and you are 18 years. When your father and mother are defending you, they say, ni mutoto. Because you are always a mutoto, because if there was nobody else born after you, you are always the mutoto. Are you understanding me? So they, they will turn near you, you know, you are the mutoto, oh, wacha and you are 18, 19, you are 20. Mutoto. Anyway, this guy was not loved by the others because everything good was given. It's like the story of Joseph. They hated him. Why? Because the Bible says the father loved him. But you know, he was the youngest. Kida kitu kizuri, mama akienda sokoni, akinunua mandizi, akija nayo, anakupatia. Na wakati ule, bwana yesu wapewe sifa. Hakuku anahela nyingi. Amen. Mama akienda ju, ananunua mandizi na ana make sure yule mtoto mdogo wako na yake. Hao wengine mna we mkataneni, kataneni. Hiyo kataneni mkure wawiri wawiri. So it's like they will look at this young person and if there is a way they could harass him, they would. David was behind their taking shape. But the Bible records that Samuel could not sit 
And I want to declare to somebody here there is a Samuel in your life and he will not sit until you show up, until you come to where he is so that he can pour the blessing that he has for you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And it does not matter how your brothers or how your sisters think about you. Amen. Yes, it does not matter. It does not matter. David was there. It did not matter what the, the others thought. When God decided to bless him, he blessed him and prospered him. But it is good for you to know that God had a wonderful plan. When he looked at David, he saw a, a giant killer. I don't know when God looks at you, what does he see? Are you a giant killer? I want to promise to prophesy to some people here that when God looks at you, not the way you look at yourself, he sees the potential of a giant killer. May the giant killers arise one of these days and destroy the giants around us in the mighty name of Jesus. When he sees you, he sees someone who can marry anyone and you can be married by anyone. You know, some of us look at each other and you wonder, you are not the one who decides you will marry me. You are not the one who decides I will marry who. Because if the Lord blesses me, like he did to David, David became a candidate to marry the daughter of King Saul. Can you imagine? King Saul. Now, I do that kama Jana to kill at Nubani to rewatch. But I do any visitors again, I could come Mama Muna watch. Hatuochaki kira siku. No, let me tell you, to know what chigi da kini had to concentrate. Mimi do not penda my movies, my cowboys, action. So when Alice walks in, I have to put it off because she has. We, sasa ukienda kurara na ume dushi dushi yuko to na dushi. But some of you guys, you know that our movies were cowboys. Ile factual films. You remember those factual films? They will come into a town and they will show we will hang there until we knew some of those cowboys. And we used to say cowboy never dies. And when he dies, he never decays. When he decays, he dies then when he, you are not there. So anyway, yesterday we were watching some interviews. The, there was somebody being interviewed, you know. And uh, the message that I got was, when these two identified to each other. One of them, Paramount Kenyanjui was the grandfather. And the other one, Senior Chief Koinange, was his grandfather. You get? So at one point they say, then we can relate. Now I'm, I'm, I'm saying that to mean this. There are some of us who cannot relate that way, but if God is involved, like he was involved in David. There was no way the door could be shut for David. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Yes, he became a favorite king. Hallelujah. David prospered so much that it messed him for a while. And that's why I'm praying God will help us that our wealth will not mess us. Najua wengine tunamesiwa na kitu kidogo tu. Elfu moja, elfu tano. Elfu kumi, mia moja, inakumes tu. One of the things that I, I know why God did not give me a kind in the 70s, it is because it would have killed me. Utoke high school, uende shagari. Sinikia beba wa sijana wato wada ninaona. Wewe ingeo. Wewe usikaya kiti ya mbele, kaa nyuma. The young people that were my age mate, we saw them destroying themselves. I'm a barikiwa na inamumaliza baraka. You know, a story is given, and I was, it was posted to, by my family member. It, is said, it talked about a rich man whose ring was swallowed by a rat. And he looked for a rat hunter to come and hunt for the rat that had eaten or swallowed the ring. And the professional rat hatter came and he entered into where the rats are and he saw them. But some rats were together, you know, still eating and enjoying one another. But there was one rat that was away from the others. 
And the rat hunter killed the rat that was away from the others. And when they opened it, the ring was there. So the owner is asking, how did you know the rat that had the ring? And he said, because the ring in the heart of that rat made the rat very proud. And the rat was wondering, how can I mix myself with other rats? May God have mercy upon us because when God blesses you, he, you don't change a bit. But I know some of us change so much. We want to change friends. We want to change the way we walk. We want to change what we eat. Don't change anything. If anything, change your prayer life. Change your concern for others. Become more concerned for others. Humble yourself even more so that God can keep on lifting you higher and higher. David, for a while, what God had blessed him killed him also. But God had mercy. He revived him. And David continued, blessed be the name of the Lord. Too many Christians believe that living for God means living defeated lives. They think you are more holier if you live in a destroyed home where there is no peace. They believe that when you're having no hope here to raise above the things that the devil has stolen, you are okay. You want to be poor in the spirit and poor in life. But I say, no, I'll be poor in spirit, but I'll not be poor in life. Because he became poor for my sake. No wonder he's giving me permission to make wealth and become what I... And I want to tell somebody here today, you know, please know this. God has given you permission to prosper. And I want to say to someone here, you, your potential doesn't have to stay buried forever. May your potential come forth. Amen. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, Amen. you have potential. Amen. No, tell them like you are serious. You have a lot of potential in you. May the potential with you come forth. Yes. See, we, have, we, we, we normally say this. May the lion of Judah, Morodiwa Judah, Okangoro, come inside. You know, Ruruma, you know, it's like, you know, I have a friend of mine actually who loves the Lord so much and he's a Kikuyu man who loves Kikuyu so much. He speaks Kikuyu every time. I think he speaks to all of us. So he, in his preaching, he might get to a place. He says, Jesus, Adimora. Oh my goodness. And then people will ask, what are you saying? He's saying, Jesus, hey, Jesus, uh, make something. You are still around. Blessed be the name of the Lord. May your potential, let them not stay buried forever. May they come forth. In 2018, may your potential come forth in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor, tell them, neighbor, may your talents, may your talents be displayed. And you're sitting next to someone who is talented. Oh man, look at your neighbor very well. Ask them, what talent do you have? <laughs> Let them tell you. Now, some of you will say, I have no talent. There is no one without a talent. You either one have one or two or five. You, none of us has no talent. Come on, I am talented. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. So I want to speak to you in this year that God wants to prosper us and given us permission to prosper that your talent cannot and don't allow it to stay buried in the mighty name of Jesus. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. in your spiritual life, the Lord wants you to prosper. You know, now maybe some of you are asking, how can I prosper in my kiroho? Now, there are some of you, and I don't want you to lift up your hands, who, muna nipenda sana. Selo yangu muna kujaga. Na inakujaga sande tu. Sita kuhilue mkono. If you want to grow spiritually, you have to decide in 2018, I will have three important meetings in my life. Three. Tell your neighbor three. Ah, wacha uyo enda kwa uyo mwingine. Uyo anaonekana hakushika three. Because you see, you cannot grow with only one cell here, Jumapili. You need three. Number one, 
you can choose either Monday or Wednesday to join the others here. Either Monday for prayer or Wednesday for Bible study. That's number one. The second day you choose is where you have a smaller group that will discover the talents you have. Amen. What about ukidlala nja wanajua? Unajua ukidja uniambie kona nja. You know how you're going to behave. Utaoga. Upige manukato. Kama ni dada upake. Sawa sawa. Sasa hata ukingia kwa ofizu unanambia umelala nja na kuangalia. Kutoka kwa kitu na angalia chini. Hata nilaza kukuuliza. Dada kiatu yako ni ya pesa ngapi. You know. But your neighbors know you when you leave with a night dress for the milk outside. Amen. Eh? Yaani umetoka na night? Kuchukua nini? Huyo ndiye huyo ndiye anaweza jua ulilala njaa. But some of us you want us to know ulilala njaa it becomes very difficult. Ni pale tu tuko watu wa Mungu. Ukisema uko na njaa hata umejipaka wanja, we we'll still give you something. And then of course my Sunday sale. See you. Tat. Give me three days. And your spiritual prosperity is guaranteed because you will know you'll join us in prayer, the Bible study, and the cell where you can grow with the people. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Your spiritual condition can improve. In fact, it can improve a whole lot. You can really improve. And some of you can become what God has desired for you to become. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now David, the Bible records that David was prayed, was anointed. Samuel anointed him. Anointed David. And I want to say this, if I'm going to prosper, then I have to allow the Lord to anoint me. I have to allow my life to have a change and a direction. Blessed be the name of the Lord, the anointing. Because when the anointing comes, I will resist the devil. And when I resist the devil, he will flee away from me. With anointing, I will prosper in a day when others are saying there is no prosperity in the land. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know, the difference between David being a shepherd boy and a king in a great nation was the following. The difference. The difference was number one, the anointing of God on his life. Never play with a shepherd boy anointed by God. Never play or joke with a house girl that is anointed by God. Never play with a housewife. It, she doesn't work anywhere, but she has an anointing of God. Never joke with that kind of, of a person. Never joke with a person that God has put a release and his hand upon him. It is the anointing that makes the difference. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In the year that God wants me to prosper, I will allow the Lord to anoint me. Anointing that breaks every yoke will release me to my prosperity. Anointing oil in his life. Because what does that anointing do? It gives you influence. Hallelujah. Influence. You become an influential person. Your neighbors want to hear you say something. Your brothers and sisters, unless you say something, they don't. They don't conclude a meeting. They will still wait. You know, you could be the youngest. But they are saying, Nawewe. Unanielewa. They look at you and they say, Nawewe. And you are the youngest. Why? Because the anointing gives you influence. May the Lord give you influence in the place where you work. May they ask you the direction they are going. May they come even to borrow. Najua kuna matajiri wegine. Yeah, napewa mshara mkubwa. Hikimadizika wikibiri ya nakuja. Kwa yule... Dada dugu anapewa 15,000. Ya anasuipigi huko. Bia, eh, mwa, mwa, no, ndo nenge kindu. <laughs> Siu nipe kitu ndakulipa. Yani, you know, you become a lender. It is not how much, but it is the influence that God can give upon your life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. May you become that influential where you are because of the anointing. The other thing that God wants to give us because of the anointing is favor. Favor, I tell you, if there is something that you need to cry for, ask the Lord for, is favor. How many young people in this country? Now, maybe let me ask this, because I want, to, I, I want you to get the point. How many young people come from Bondo? 
Young people from Bondo. Have you, do you have a figure? There are so many young people in Bondo. How about Siaya? Now, if Othiambo from Migori can be spotted by Raida, what do you call that? He's not a relative. That is favor. And what we need is actually favor is more than money. Because if you are favored by God, there is no door that can be locked for you. And that releases you to prosperity, favor. And I, norm I normally ask Judy, Judy, are you favored? And then Judy says, not only favored, God has also flavored. Amen. I like that, Judy. I'm not only favored, God has flavored me. May God flavor you too. May you be favored to flavor. May you test something good. When, may people desire to be with you. May people desire to fellowship with you. Not because of only favor, but because favor flavors you. You become useful. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What does anointing do? Anointing, anointing blesses. God blesses you. I live under the anointing. I live under the blessings. Blessing, blessing be in the name of the Lord. Anointing protects. Anointing protects. That's why the Bible is giving us permission to prosper. He is just another kid out there. But wait until the boy is anointed. He doesn't run to be a king because I believe one of the things I believe and I was, as I was thinking about David, when he was anointed king, he did not know what the guys were doing. He just came from somewhere. And when he entered, Samuel had to go to the house was told in the you anoint him. You know, there was no lecture. Oh, young man, you're going to be the king of Israel and so on and so forth. The guy just walked in and God says, Samuel, arise and anoint him. So David is coming and without knowing, he sees they are just pouring oil upon him and, you know, a few things. And so when they finish, what does the boy do? What he knows how to do very well, which is go back. The older ones would have gone to fight Saul immediately. But David went back where? The place he knew well. Because I normally say when God anoints me to that other level, I don't have to quit what I'm doing. I have to continue doing what I'm doing, serving the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He went back. And no wonder the Bible records when he went back, he saw a lion one day coming after the, the sheep. The anointing came upon him. What did he do with the lion? Tore it up into pieces. Blessed be the name of the Lord. They might not know what God has done to you. But what did you do when sickness came? You stood on the name of the Lord and healing came. God is still pushing you. You believed God for provision of finances for your children. That is also an anointing. But what? You're still waiting for God to take you where he wants you to be. Because God will take you there. And then the following day, on another day, David is still walking around and a bear shows up. And what does he do? The Spirit of the Lord comes upon him. And what does he do to the bear? He destroys the bear. I'm talking to people that are listening to me. If you receive the anointing of God upon your life, it doesn't matter what people think. You don't have to tell them. You have to wait until the time comes. When due time came, David became a king. But before he became a king, God had demonstrated to him, no wonder... When he's killing Goliath, he does not fear because he knew if the anointing comes upon me, that thing, I'm going to destroy it in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So God brings those things to us because he has given us the power to prosper. Hallelujah. The anointing upon David poured upon him. He changed his life and from that day, he became a giant killer. He had not killed any giant, but from that anointing, he became a giant killer. From that anointing, he became a strong person to write songs and so on in the name of the Lord. And I want to speak to someone here, because all what you need in 2018 is an anointing, and you will write songs that will, will, will have actually died with you. You write books, you become a speaker in many places. Blessed be the name of the Lord. There are some of you all what you're waiting for is an anointing to release you into what you want to become, even in marriage. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
I want to say two things or three or four and then I'll be done. God wants you to prosper spiritually. God wants you to prosper spiritually. In the book of Acts, chapter number two, it talks about the infilling of the Spirit. And I want to say to people listening to me, you can have the Holy Spirit. He is not for a few. He is for us. And whether you have been able to copy a few tongues, you know, they are, we call them business tongues. Have you had people in Kameme, Kigosho, and you think they are filled with the Spirit? No, those ones are business tongues. May God give you his anointing, and may you babble in tongues. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And you could be here in church and maybe in my worship group and you have picked some language. I pray that God can fill you with his Holy Spirit and manifest himself by giving you tongues. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Anointing that breaks every yoke. Hallelujah. You can have the Holy Spirit, no doubt about it. God wants to fill you with his Spirit just like he did those believers in Jerusalem. And just like he did to his servant when he anointed David. Believers in Samaria. When what he did in Cornelius' house, he filled them with the Holy Spirit. May he do the same to you. He did it to John's disciples on the, on the road as they were going to a mouse. You have permission to receive the Holy Spirit. It is not a reserve for a few people. We, nobody can sell it to you. Just like you received Christ, you can say, Holy Spirit of God, come and anoint me. Come and change me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Secondly, God wants your marriage to prosper. Why am I talking about marriage? Because marriage is under siege. The devil wants to steal the sweetness of marriage. Why do I say sweetness of marriage? You that are married, you know this as a man. That there are things that you, you started hearing from your wife that your father could not tell you your mother could not tell you. Your sister could not tell you. Your cousin could not tell you. Is it true? Yet immediately you got married somewhere. Rebecca told you things that we would not have told you. And Rebecca could challenge you. No wonder when you get married, you don't get married to your sister. Or your mother. You get married to somebody else. And because of that, there is a lot of devil that wants to destroy that unity, that joy of having someone who can tell you, you poor yako, who kuoga vizuri. Kata njure igine inatokea huko dani. But you see, the Lord is saying, with his anointing, my marriage can succeed. Now, not with his standing, that some of your marriages could have some mistrust and bitterness, God can release love to your spouse. And I know one of the things that I have learned over the years is not to become, not to bring debate in my house. My house is my house. Amen? Amen. It is not a wrestling match. So, a topic comes. The moon is only 3,000 miles away from here. I will not argue. Because I will not go there tomorrow. <laughs> My house is not a parliament where people argue whether this will go here or this will go there. No. So you can turn your house and start having love for one another. Who could see every name I say? Ma, apana unasema nirisiki ni kujibu ni meamua se jibuleo. I know when I speak like this, the young people are saying, Apana siyo kuangula zima ajibu sahi hata lala. Now that's your problem. Hauta lala hata wewe. Unafikile ni yetu hata lala? Hata wewe hauta lala. Lakini mukikubaliana kwamba majibu ni tuta. Let's think about it. You will sleep and wake up tomorrow morning and she will serve you tea. Lakini lala vibaya. Wangalie huko na yangalie kule. Hata chai unakata kunyu wa subui wewe. Na umepewa. Na ni kwako. Ayy. There is an anointing that God wants to release upon our marriages so that our marriages can prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. And your marriage can prosper and give love to you to love your spouse. And you can even love your children. You know children are so innocent, but when people quarrel, 
they kind of divide the children huyu pua inaonekana ni kama yako na huyu mdomo ni kama wangu yani mnaanza kugawana huyo ni wako huyo ni wangu huyo ni wako but if god gives this grace and anointing you can love all your children whether they look like you you know my children look like me as a man that have left the church because i've said this kitu kathrin kitu tu kitu tu akikuchapa huyu jamaa uniite hiyo tu kwa sababu wewe sio boxing bag ya kuchapwa sasa akikuchapa na wewe ni mweupe si utakuwa na vitu nyeusi all over the place so that's the only thing that that the only thing that i say kama anataka kukuua muache kama kila siku ni kukugonga wewe hapana darama ya muhaleluya waachane na wewe uende zako God has put his blessing over your marriage a long time ago and he hasn't lifted up. There is hope. In fact, there is great hope, abundant hope. Your marriage has got permission to prosper. Number three, God wants me to prosper financially. Financially. Hallelujah. What does he want? He wants it to be pressed down. He wants it to be shaken over. He wants it to be running over. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And it does not matter where I come from. I know there are some people who think that they cannot be blessed. And I normally say there is none of us that cannot be blessed by God. None of us. None of us. What the devil does is to cause us to be ignorant about the principles that God has laid over us. And we'll look at one of the principles maybe the Sunday after the, other, after the next. Because not disability can hinder God to bless you. Not your race or sex. Not age. Not even the neighborhood where you come from. I know some of you don't know a place called Jangiliba. I lived there with my sister. But that does not mean today I'll be in Jangiliba. Jangiliba iko kule ndani ya madhare. Kule ndani. Pombe dio nyingi. Na nilikunywa. Because how do you require breakfast, lunch, and supper? <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? But God can lift you from wherever. I, that's what I want you to believe, God. That God can lift you from wherever. Not even your background. He ignores it. He ignores even your father. Not like my two friends who said we can be, we can be good friends because Chief uh, Paramount Chief Kenyanjui and Senior Chief Koinange. Si unaona sisi ni damu yetu ni babu zetu pamoja. Now I'm saying I don't have to have that blood. But if God decides that Uhuru will come and worship here one day, I don't have to call him. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Not even where you grow on or the neighborhood that you're in. It cannot stop the Lord blessing you. But you can stop it. Wewe ndi unaweza kataa baraka. You can stop the blessing from coming and flowing into your life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The only thing stopping you from succeeding at what you want to do in career or job or business is when you lack the favor of God. Is when you lack God's blessing. It is when you lack the flow of the Lord and the gifts that he gives his people. Is when you lack the anointing because he has given you permission to prosper. Finally, he has given us permission to prosper as a witness to others. Now that is the place that I think in this year of kingdom manifestation, God will have to take us. I told you the other day, somebody told us, God never called any pastor to build a church. Because it is God who says, I who build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail it. So this building, I was not called to build, to build a building. I only build a building because you people came. Now we can do away with this building by winning more souls because it will be bad for us to sit here and think we have arrived. We need to sit here and become very uncomfortable. When you see people standing, you get uncomfortable. And you get so uncomfortable that you want to push or break it. And I said we can bomoa this. And some of you looked at me and said to bomoe. Yes. Yes. 
Even the other one had tiles. We brought it down. Because our call is to souls. Tell your neighbor souls. Witness to your neighbor. Witness to the people you work with. Become a witness. That God will prosper you as a witness. Mtu ambaye naanza kuudia we mawake. And I knew this year is going to turn that way. When, when we are closing the year, people started getting saved then. And they will keep on getting saved every day because that is the desire of God. But it will take you to allow God to prosper you as a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. Tell people about Jesus. And if you don't know how to tell them, give them a testimony of what God has done for you. And even tell them, even in our church if you came, the preacher will preach to you and your life will be changed. You can do that and the life of many others will be changed. Become a witness for Jesus. Let's talk about Jesus. Everywhere we find ourselves in a matatu as we drive. Remember Peter was just a fisherman. But when God turned him around, he started fishing men. And because of the anointing, Peter could dare tell the cripple that was sick for many years. Look at us. Silver and gold we don't have. But what we have we want to give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. That can happen to you. May it happen to you. Remember, Paul was a murderer, but Paul was turned around by anointing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew was hated as a tax collector, but the Lord turned him to serve the Lord. They chose abundant life. You see, you have to choose to prosper. Even when the thief had tried to kill you last year, you have to choose to prosper. Even when the thief tried to steal from you, you have to choose to prosper even when the thief has tried to destroy you. You have to choose that I'm going to prosper. Last night I spoke with a lady who told me, tell the devil that you're going to leave and you're not going to die. I thought that was very powerful. Have you ever received a phone with someone who speaks to you? Say, Moro, do you Amen. You will leave and see the wonders of God. May God do the same to you. May the Lord speak to you and may your friends be the ones who encourage you that you can live in the name of the Lord. But you have to choose because the devil wants to kill, the devil wants to steal, the devil wants to destroy. But the Lord has come and he wants to give us life and the abundance of it. Choose abundant life. Choose abundant life. I want to go back to David and finish by saying this. When they anointed David, I told you when he came in, he did not know what was going on. They just said anoint him, and he woke up to anoint him. He didn't get upset because his hair was getting oil poured over it. Actually, the boy did not care. Oil in gear. Na uchafu yake, na nguozake na uchafu wake. Anointing ikuje. That's why I say God is so wonderful. He doesn't ask me to go and wash first. He just releases his anointing upon me. And may he release it the same to you. He did not ask. They did not even have to hold him down. No. He just came and he was told, anoint him. And he comes in and he stands there. I like children. Children are great, aren't they? What you tell them to do is what they do. He was anointed. In fact, even though he did not understand what was going on, I believe there was a little something inside of David that said, I have been waiting on this for a long time. Wewe, lion, you are going to see me. You bear, you are going to see me. I was waiting. He did not even think about becoming a king. He said, well, I was waiting for this for a long time. I have needed this anointing in my life for a long time, and here it comes. As that anointing poured out over his life, something came up to him, and that's my prayer. May God release an anointing upon you that releases courage to serve him. Peace to come upon you as you wait on the Lord. Faith that to come into your heart and abundance to start happening into your life. All what we need, brothers and sisters, is anointing. For us to prosper because God wants us to prosper, then we need an anointing. And I'm speaking to people here this morning that all they have been seeing is a giant before them. You want to be a giant killer? You need an anointing. Maybe I'm speaking to people here, all what they see is a breakup in their marriage. What are you looking for, waiting for, is an anointing from God. I see some people that only see them being fired. 
unafikiria unaenda kufutwa all what you need is an anointing so that nobody can futa you and if they futa you there is another door open for you are you hearing what i'm saying there are some some of you are children here and all what you have had is negativity until you, you have even doubted your father you know there are some of you you are the father the real father of that child but you have made the child think ye ni mtoto wa kambo because of the way you treat them may god release some anointing to the boy that feels when ni mtoto wa kambo so that you can know there is no kambo here we all have a father Amen. and the father is that in heaven Amen. blessed be the name of the lord may god release that anointing upon you even those that are saying financially even those that are saying spiritually i need a help remember i have told you for you to grow spiritually you need three meetings very powerful meetings and you can make the choice lakini hii sele yangu ya jumapili usikose hii inakuwa na warm zaidi lakini hata kale kadogo ka watu 10 uingie ndani uwe na ushirika pale our heavenly father the father of our lord and savior jesus christ we want to thank you this morning you have given us the power and the permission to prosper may you prosper us in all ways in all ways Maybe as I spoke you said yes bishop I need an anointing there are battles that I have to fight there is a giant that I have to bring down there are finances that I have gone to get and there are some struggles in my spiritual life that I have to end now in the mighty name of Jesus if that is the kind of prayer that you're praying I want you to stand up on your two feet because that will be a sign that you're saying struggles I will not struggle any more Our heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we are standing in this auditorium today. We are standing in this cathedral today. Yes. And dear Father, we are all facing the altar. And dear Father, from this altar I pray that God the anointing of God is going to flow and touch every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. That heavenly Father, whatever they need from you, because Lord, when you release your anointing, there is someone here that this week will slay a giant in the mighty name of Jesus there is someone here that dear father this week they will have that opening of a spiritual and financial breakthrough in the name of Jesus all because of the anointing there is someone here dear father that is standing because of their marriage and god they are crying to you oh god release an anointing to love my spouse may that anointing for love and concern and togetherness flow in the life of the people here in the mighty name of Jesus those that are still pursuing careers here and there those are also giants those that have already cleared their courses and they're looking for jobs those are giants and father may you release an, an, an anointing that will give them courage to walk from door to door finding that which is theirs in the mighty name of Jesus lord god we want to thank you and we want to give you praise